on the leverage, on the declining subs. So what happened between then and we, now? We, I remember too, Sarah, I remember talking to you about it before the interview, <laughs> actually, about what you, what you should ask. And, and I, part of it that I remember was that this idea that regional sports networks were not a declining business. Well, when you parse apart his answer, what he seemed to not allude to was this general idea that linear TV, secularly, was starting to fall apart. And what happened between then and now was the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, we saw the amount of people canceling traditional cable TV dramatically accelerate. So that interview was 2019. Of course, the pandemic hit maybe six months later. And then the acceleration of these millions of American households canceling cable for their bucket of streaming services hit. And every single person, or almost every person, that was paying for cable TV was paying for a regional sports network, whether they watched that or not. And so um, billions of dollars came out of the system over the past couple of years. And regional sports networks, as the model is drawn up, doesn't really work anymore, particularly because Sinclair paid more than $10 billion for these 21 regional uh, sports networks that they bought out of that Disney transaction. As you alluded to in the intro, almost all of that was debt. So that's why mm. we're here now in this, in this sort of situation of restructuring, because there's simply not enough cash flow coming in for the amount of money that they spent on the networks and that they owe all of the teams to broadcast their content. So what happens next to them? Yeah, that is the $64,000 question. <laughs> uh, we don't really know. Sinclair has come out re recent months, year or so, and said, look, we have a streaming solution. We'll charge $20 a month and people can get access to these networks. Again, the issue there is that it's not clear that streaming really works for a regional sports network because only the people that follow a given team are paying for this. And, and that amount of money, the amount of people that want to watch regional sports is way less, millions and millions and millions less than the amount of people that were previously signing up for cable TV. That number was 70, 80 million. Uh, so now we're just talking about fans of the teams and fans of the teams that want to pay $20 a month to watch those mm -hmm. teams. It's just not a huge number. So what may end up happening here is the leagues may actually end up buying back the rights themselves out of bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. well, the first step will be that the creditors will likely take over ownership. Then they would sell, theoretically, the rights back to the NBA, Major League Baseball, and the NHL. Those are the three major leagues associated with this. This is just one solution, one potential solution I'm talking about. But if the leagues were to take back the rights, that would potentially boost the value of the leagues going forward. Right. There are some people that I've spoken with that even posit maybe the leagues themselves will go public one day and they will use these media rights as sort of another revenue stream to make that pitch to go public. But that's likely years down the road. But it's an interesting prospect and why they would want the rights themselves. Alex, thank you. Alex Sherman.